There are thousands of Linux distributions out there. Some are built for servers, some for hackers, and some, some are built simply to be beautiful and precise. Today, we are looking at the distribution that hails from Germany, a country known for its engineering and attention to detail. This is Vlux OS, and recently they dropped a massive update, version 1.6. But this isn't just a fresh coat of paint. This represents a fundamental shift in the DNA of the operating system. For a long time, Vlux OS played it safe, basing their system on the long-term support version of Ubuntu. It was a safe choice, it was a familiar choice. But with version 1.6, they have done something bold. They have ripped out the Ubuntu base and replaced it with a rock-solid yet powerful Debian 13. On this episode of Linux Network, we are going to deep dive into Vlux OS 1.6. We are going to look at the new Plasma 6 desktop, the conflict-free package management, the gaming performance potential, and ask the big question, is this the right Linux distribution for you? So let's break it down. Before we look at the pretty buttons and animation, we have to talk about the engine under the hood. For the beginners, watching the base of a Linux distro dictates everything. It dictates how stable it is, how old or new software is, and how you install programs. Previously, being based on Ubuntu LTS meant you got software that was a bit older but very stable. However, Vlux OS 1.6 has moved to Debian 13. Now, for those in the know, Debian is the grandfather of many distros, including Ubuntu itself. By going directly to the source, Vlux OS is cutting out the middleman. Debian 13 codename Trixie is currently the testing branch of Debian. This is actually exciting news for desktop users. It means you are going to get newer packages and faster system response than you may get on a stale, stable release, but with the strict quality control that Debian is famous for. This move signifies that the developers want more control. They want a system that is pure, responsive and stripped of some of the bloat that Canonical sometimes adds to Ubuntu. If you've been looking for a Debian-based system that doesn't look like it was designed in 1998, this is where Vlux OS comes in. Let's talk about getting this thing running. A lot of people are scared of Debian because they think the installation is hard. Vlux OS solves this by using the Calamares installer. It is the gold standard for next, next, finish installations. It automatically detects your hard drives, it helps you partition them without needing a degree in computer science, and it's visually clear. Whether you are wiping your drive or dual booting alongside Windows, this installer makes it accessible. Once the installation is done, you hit that power button and you are greeted by a new Playmat boot screen. Playmat is the piece of software that handles the graphical animation while the computer starts up. Instead of seeing lines of code scrolling down the screen like you're in the Matrix, which is cool but scary for new users, you get a smooth, attractive animated boot screen. It feels professional, it feels like a consumer product. Even the Gram menu, that black screen with the white text you usually see when you turn on your PC, has been given a graphical overhaul. It's user-friendly and inviting. It tells you right away, hey, this is a modern system. And here we are, the desktop. Vlux OS 1.6 ships with KDE Plasma 6. If you are coming from Windows, KDE Plasma 6 is usually the best environment for you because the layout is familiar, but Plasma 6 takes that familiarity and modernizes it significantly. The most obvious change here is the floating taskbar. By default, the panel at the bottom doesn't stick to the edges of the screen. It floats slightly above the bezel. This is a design trend we're seeing a lot lately, similar to macOS or Windows 11. It gives the desktop a clean, framed look. It makes the interface feel like an overlay rather than a rigid part of the monitor. However, because this is KDE, if you hate the floating look, you can turn it off. But out of the box, it looks distinct and premium. The window design has been modernized as well. We have a fresh appearance with a crisp distinction between light and dark modes. The developers have curated these themes so you don't have weird glitches where text is unreadable. It's polished. Let's look at the optimized start menu. The standard KDE menu can sometimes be a bit cluttered. Vlux OS has revised this for a more intuitive design. Your favorites are right where you need them. The search bar is fast. If you need to find Steam or Firefox, you just hit the Super or Windows key and start typing. It feels snappy. Another nice touch is the automated weather display. It's integrated directly into the panel. 
It's elegant and dynamic. It sounds like a small thing, but having the weather update automatically without you having to configure an API key or hack a config file is exactly the kind of knob-friendly feature we want to see more. I want to take a quick second to pause here. We are diving deep into Linux distros every single week on this channel to help you find the perfect OS for your PC. If you are enjoying this overview of VLAX OS, please verify your installation of the like button, compile that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. It really helps the channel grow and helps me bring you more content like this. Alright, back to the desktop. Beauty is one thing, but does it run well? This is where the German engineering claim comes into play. The developers state that Vilax OS 1.6 features high optimization. What does that mean for you? It means they have tweaked the background processes to improve reaction speed. When you click an icon, it opens instantly. When you drag a window, it doesn't stutter. They also boost conflict-free packages. In the Linux world, dependency hell is a real nightmare. That's when you try to install an app, but it needs a specific library which conflicts with another library and suddenly your system breaks. Vlax OS has fully adjusted their dependencies. They've cherry-picked the packages to ensure that what comes on the ISO works together in harmony. For a beginner, this is peace of mind. You don't need to worry about the system fighting itself. Since we talk about gaming on this channel, how does it game? Because this is based on a newer Debian branch and uses Plasma 6, which has excellent Wayland support, gaming is surprisingly smooth. Plasma 6 has done a lot of work to support HDR and variable refresh rate. If you have a modern monitor, Vlax OS is ready to take advantage of it. The overhead of the system is low, meaning more of your RAM and GPU power goes to the game, not the background tasks. How do you get apps? You use Discover. In version 1.6, the Discover Software Center has been improved. It's a modern app store. You have a search bar, categories and ratings. You want Discord? You search for it, you click install. You want OBS Studio? Same thing. The navigation is intuitive. You don't need to use the terminal if you don't want to. Discover handles the updates for your apps and your system in one place. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Dolphin is arguably the best file manager on any operating system, Windows and Mac OS included. It is reliable, it supports tabs so you don't need a million windows open, and it has a split view feature that makes moving files around incredibly easy. The release notes also mention a functional recycle bin. This sounds funny, shouldn't the recycle bin always work? Well, sometimes on custom distros, the trash integration can be buggy. Here, it is error-free and seamlessly integrated into the panel. You delete a file, it goes to the bin. You empty it, simple, reliable. Finally, let's look at the revised settings. KDE Plasma is known for having a lot of settings. It can be overwhelming. Vlax OS has tried to organize this to be clearer. The system configuration is laid out logically. Whether you want to change your screen resolution, your Wi-Fi settings or your privacy options, it's easier to find what you are looking for compared to the stock configuration. One of the main reasons people switch to Linux is freedom. The freedom to make your computer look exactly how you want it to. Vlax OS 1.6 leans into this with advanced individualization. While the default look is great, they have enabled more options for the free design of the system. You can change the icons, the cursor, the window decoration and the splash screen. Because this is Plasma 6, you have access to the KDE store directly from the settings. You can download dozens of community-created themes. If you want your Vlax OS to look like a cyberpunk interface, you can do that. If you want it to look like Windows XP for a joke, you can do that too. The system doesn't lock you down, it invites you to tinker. So, what is the verdict on Vlax OS 1.6? Switching from an Ubuntu base to a Debian base was a risky move. But I think it paid off. You get a system that feels more robust and closer to the source code. The implementation of KDE Plasma 6 is fantastic. The floating taskbar and the modern window design make it feel like a 2026 operating system, not something stuck in the past. Who is this for? If you are a beginner, this is a great place to start if you want something that looks beautiful out of the box. The conflict-free packages and the Calamaris installer make the entry barrier very low. If you are a gamer or a content creator, the optimizations and the lightweight nature of the Debian base will serve you well. It's general engineering for your desktop. Precise, efficient and elegant. That's it for today's review of Vlax OS 1.6. 
Have you tried Debian based distros before or are you sticking with Ubuntu? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, it really makes a difference. Subscribe to Linux Network for more distro reviews, gameplay tests and tutorials. My name is Catalin and I'll see you in the next one.